to get started, my friend. In within three minutes, all right? Welcome, welcome, everybody. So say hello on the chat because I will know if you are listening to me. Okay, uh, today we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the new version of Affinity 2.1, but it's not released yet. It is it's still in beta, which means that they are still working on it. And I'm very excited because, which means that they are working very hard to bring and make the app much better. Okay, uh, hello Tick, hello Igor, Sandra. Sandra is here, I'm looking here at this moment to the chat. And I just want to let you know that we are going to have a special guest, you know, today. And you already know her. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kina will be here with us. But meanwhile, we are just waiting the two minutes for now because I want to make sure that everybody is joining us today. So this is the time that I give it to everybody to grab a water, to, you know, to call and invite your friends, you, you know, your dog, your cat, your mother, husband. Everybody, <laughs> okay? It's gonna be very nice. So also we're gonna do here, I want to do the vector drilling as always, uh, because this is something that I really like to do with you, show uh, the process, how we can come up with awesome solutions. I really love to do that, yeah, you know, uh, you know that my stream is not uh, only about affinity, also I love to do art. Yeah, yeah, nice. Hello, Mickey. Parker, <laughs> hello, me, me, plan, me plan. it's hard to pronounce his name, but it's because, you know, I'm from Brazil. <laughs> oh, we have here Bill Bowman, hello, a great from Ontario, Canada, <laughs> hoping to find Adobe. Uh, yeah, you know, I hope that Affinity will, you know, get in better uh, by the time, and I really, you know, hope that they will... Uh, not overcome, but they, they will have a, a good space on the market because, you know, uh, not many people use the Affinity in, in the world, I will be honest with you, not, not many. There are a kind of, many people that still use Adobe, but uh, of course it's a kind of, for me, you know, a mo uh, it's a monopoly, right, from uh, what Adobe does when they buy others' competitors. So it's not very fair, you know, let's say, yeah, they want to grab everybody and obligated them to be, you know, and work with them, basically. So, yeah, five minutes, my friend, and let's get started. Welcome, welcome, guys. I'm John Silva, and I hope that you are doing very well on that. It doesn't matter where you live, you know, uh, you are very welcome to this channel. And today, we're going to talk about the new version of Affinity 2.1, the better one. And I have here a special guest. So, let's see here who is here. Hey, Kina, how are you doing? <laughs> so, Kina, are you excited to to uh, one more live here together? Yeah, no, we, we were having uh, fun yesterday figuring out what camera to use, and it turned out I had a whole <laughs> kit I didn't even know about. Guys, so, look at this. Uh, Kina now, Kina now is a really professional, you know, uh, camera streamer now. Now she got <laughs> a new level. <laughs> I'm very happy to see that. Uh, thank you, Kina, for joining. Uh, you, know, you you are very great, and you, you are inside here with uh, everything that we do over the backstage is very welcome. So uh, I just want to share with you guys here, okay? Because this is the only way that I can keep my ideas on track. Because you know <laughs> I'm very sometimes distracted. But that that case, let me share here the top, Kina. Here we go. Uh, guys, uh, we're gonna talk about in this structure, right? Very simple, shortly, indirect. I think it's better 2.1 and some of the changes, right? And well, I think that can uh, also have experienced that and others users about the 2.0. You know, I I personally found a little bit buggy or laggy the 2.0 when released, but I, I quite understand that when you release an, an app you know, yeah, like Windows or even iPhones, you start to get some kind of, it's very recent, right, Kina? And it was not very uh, good in my perspective here. Um, I mean, it, it was pretty obvious that they released before it was ready because more to do with financial quarters and, you know, um, timing for, for funding than like the preparedness of the product. Um, and that's not yeah. uncommon. It's getting more and more common. Um, yeah. So, I mean, they, they launch with the minimal viable product and then expect to patch and repair and 
you know, add on uh, yeah. throughout the, the process. So I'm a little disappointed um, because it was a much buggier experience than I was hoping for. Yeah. But I also understand. So. Yeah, but hopefully in this new version, uh, they are focusing over the improvements as, as I saw. Because I, I always stay on the forum. I always stay on there to ask for features <laughs> to fight for. Hey, guys, we want that. We want, you know, of course, we need to respect. We need to understand there are, you know, limitations because they are small. They are not Adobe like there are more, much more than 1000, you know, uh, people working there. And but what I really like most you know, in the situation that Affinity is going, you know, for the future, uh, that case is the forum. It is really they are more open to the users. They are sharing the features with users, even you know, in the early stages. This is really great, and really I want to thank Ash, which is you know the guy that is responsible for you know most of the things that happens to the Affinity apps. And here, as you guys can see, it is you know the official post over the forum. It's here that you can uh, follow what's happening. But here, it's the list of things that Affinity is improving. There are many things that they are improving, hopefully. Uh, and of course, some new tools that they are bringing, and I will talk, you know, uh, shortly about these tools. That case, but just to you know, say from my perspective, I'm very happy with this positioning of affinity, of you know, stay with community, uh, user focusing. Oh my gosh, I'm very happy, really happy. I think that this is a new future for affinity to understand more what the users want, what you know, their struggles. Uh, you know, and of course, the performance uh, soon will get better, but I'm very happy to see this, this kind of positioning. Of course, perhaps we don't want to, let's say, ah, some people want to have all the features like auto tracing, things very crazy, but we need to understand that there are limitations. It's not just uh, uh, apply one button and everything is ready. Uh, but I really like this improvement here over the user community. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts about this, Kina? About the forum? Do you think um, that it's gonna get I would better? Say it's a fairly productive forum. There's other forums for other art applications that I keep track of, and this one is very active. Um, they get a lot of you know in-depth responses, and I mean, there's use cases for this program I had no clue about until I started reading the forums and seeing what people were asking for or needed from the application. It's like, oh wow, they're really trying to juggle. A lot of needs. Mm -hmm. um, so that's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, true, true. Uh, so let's talk about the news. So here, guys, uh, we have now the vector fluid. I will show you how that works before I you know because I, I like to go step by step. But basically, here, uh, let me create a new document because you can see better. I'll create a Rondo document here just to explain how that works. You know, very simple way. But basically, guys, the this tool here, which is called you know uh, the vector fluid view. The, this one here, uh, basically you can, uh, let's say you you start to draw here, uh, these shapes, all right, like that, and then I will just add here a stroke, just like this. Uh, the this option, you know, this option here, basically you can paint like that. Let's say I have here. Let me show this screen. Oops, uh, that case. I think this one here. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Guys, basically, if you click here, can you see? You can paint the the fuse, basically. And even if you have a open, let's say, let me convert this to curves, because you can see better how that works. I'll convert to curves and open the, the strokes, okay? So let's say you have here this shape, this one, so let me remove it now. So if I go to the uh, paint, that case the vector fluid field, you can fill these areas, okay, it, which is right here. It's already in there, okay. So of course, um, there are some. I I feel like there's still some kind of you know little um, minor issues, but I feel like hey, it's better. So we need to understand that it's not ready yet. It's not released. But this is really cool already because if you're doing line art, like if you're drawing, let's say, uh, cartoony hands like that. I don't know. Let's see. It's not like this. <laughs> it's not the best one, but just show Yeah, you. No, it's a very handy tool. Um, Clip Studio Paint has something similar, but it, of course, is a raster application. But this tool is particularly useful for flat coloring. Uh, 
So a mm -hmm. lot of times for different types of illustrations, you might have the line art and then separate your colors underneath. And instead of having to create whole new shapes underneath the line art or, or duplicating the shape that you made to layer the effect that you want, I mean, you can just live paint it. Um, yeah. So it's very handy. Uh, also, can I hear, can you see, I have here two separate curves mm -hmm. like that. And let's say that you want to paint in between. Of course, it's not possible because the Affinity will not understand where to fill this area. But if you match the, the nodes, at least, even they are separated, like now, can you see they are here together? Uh, let me bring this camera because it's better to show, I guess. Uh, basically, what you can do here, it is to, to fill this area. You know, you can fill, let me select them. Or, and then you're gonna extract here this shape from this area. So you don't, don't need to uh, create the shape from scratch. This is uh, really cool, right? Let me just bring this here. Mm -hmm. We did have a question from uh, the comments uh, asking if Affinity will ever do animation. Um, I don't know I that they I don't would do so. <laughs> animation within their current products. They would probably yeah. make a separate app if they wanted to. But there's mm. so many other um, vector-based animation applications like Moho or Anime Studio um, that they might just maybe work on integrating with those applications easier rather than create their own right away. And it might be down the line. Maybe they have a plan for that, but um, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't think that we're going to have an animated you know, app because I, I like to, I say to others people that like to use affinity apps, uh, let's try the working what they have instead of, you know, <laughs> asking them for new stuff like another apps. I think they, they are too new to have more. Uh, it seems like if you have one kid and then you want to have more kids to take care. And if you cannot take care of one kid, oh, what the hell are you going to have more, more kids? <laughs> so this is right. my perspective, okay? Uh, this is how I... I think and so I prefer they get better much better in what they have instead of having new apps this is my my point of view uh, and now let me back here uh, and you and other apps so the raster remesh Kina now is available over the raster persona mm -hmm. this is really cool because now let's say you are making the drawing here like like this one now on the over the raster persona you can go to the raster persona and now you have here the new live filter layer here which now can apply to the raster like this you can change just like that before we don't have that in raster let's say you want to make mockups okay let's say you want to make mockups with the affinity in that case uh let's say make a phone in perspective an image on affinity design it was not possible that case it was a kind of um, you need to go and switch to the Affinity photo to do that. But now it's possible to use the raster persona and go to the new live filter and use the perspective like that. Uh, this is different from the vector perspective, okay? It's quite different. It's not the same. It's not the same. Vector uh, warp, it is different from the live filter uh, layer here. Because this is raster, all right? This one here, new one. Basically, they brought the 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 photo feature and bring here to affinity in order to make this uh let's say better and faster good that's very good uh, next one layer rename rename by tab that case uh here kina basically now uh if you if you uh, click twice into the name here okay and you hit tab you can now rename let's say ah house you one tab house you two tab house three so it's a kind of Little feature that it's it speed up our, our process. It is really cool. I I like that. But I ask them, <laughs> you know, Kina. I went to their <laughs> forum and I asked them, hey guys, what about to have a, a batch rename? Like if you select fifty or a hundred layers and you want to rename all together, all at the same time. And then you know uh, the people listen to me at least. Ah, okay, this could be nice. And I hope they will try. I hope that they will bring because. I personally, uh, when I'm working with graph design, you know, elements, I have many elements to export sometimes, like 100, yeah. 200, and to rename everything one by one, 
Oh my gosh, it's really <laughs> hard. It's really hard. <laughs> and I bet your name would be really awesome. It's, it's a kind of, you know, in terms of coding, it's, it's really possible. I don't think that it's really big and complex. I you know, uh, because I remember I did a, my background was on programming school. Like 10 years ago, I made, uh, you know, four years of programming school. And at least this kind of renaming feature is kind of easy. <laughs> I hope. Uh, next one. Measurement now, Kina, it is on Affinity um, Photo and Publisher. Now you can use the the yeah. ruler tool here, you That's know, in that handy. one. So yeah. many, many moons ago, um, I used to design stained glass windows and um, being able to measure things and list the me measurements and be like exact to like, you know, 16th to an inch um was really important so that was something i missed from uh, affinity up until recently yeah uh yeah that case i think they they want to make more seamless i mean mm -hmm. the transition between the apps and how they talk with each other and you know uh, for those that work with kind of publishing stuff marketing uh you know uh, products and producing ebooks oh my god i think this is gonna be the best app the best app and here we have uh, some there are, you know the I just copy here they plan to add more you know features this is not let's say we are still on the 2.1 but the, perhaps it's gonna have more features to bring I really hope I really hope that they they will bring some kind of symmetry feature in vector oh my gosh this would be very very awesome because in the way that I'm using the symmetry is a kind of you know uh, hack I'm using yeah. symbols to do that. It's not the best one because it, it's kind of hard. It's kind of a time demand, but I hope that they will add this. And next one, um, a drag and drop bitmap fill to color and swatch panel. Basically this one here, let me, let's say this example here. Uh, let's say that you have this shape, all right? This one, let, let me merge them to be together. Uh, that's case, if you open uh, a pattern that you have like let's say this one and drag here to the color and actually to the swatches as well it's gonna you know you can grab the image and bring it into here and it's gonna place in there mm -hmm. uh, ah, let me show I think the screen is better to show uh, yeah this one so if I click here and drag the image into my swatches it should you know appear here as I, I tried but I don't know why it, it doesn't show here some uh, somehow but it you can data. Yeah, yeah, but if you click here, you can save. You can save. You can save the, you know, the uh, the bitmap. So you can switch here uh, between, you know, the the asset like that. You can see, oh, selecting and switching. This is nice as well. Okay, you can switch here and add images really quickly, like this one. Let's say I yeah, I want to place this, and then I have here <laughs> this image. <laughs> really cool. Uh, of course, I hope in the future they will consider to make the tracing, you know, uh, thing like the vector trace. Ah, uh, let me say a big hello to to Vela. Is here. Oh, Vela. we have as well as Evzone, and oh, Miko Leme is here as well. Welcome, my friends. Ashley is here uh, as well. Juan Carlos Zarat, hi from Argentina. Thank you guys. So uh, that's key. Let me back to where we were. Uh, Ah, yeah, of course, uh, guys, this is just the, the chair on the cake. Uh, I've explained it here, you know, a short way because there are many things that they, they brought, but uh, this, the ones that I show you, it's the most important one. Uh, there are others, you know, features that you can check it out here on the forum, but feel free, right? Feel free because we don't have a lot of time here on the stream. <laughs> guys, uh, Kina, now it's time to make the vector doodling, all right? Yes. <laughs> uh, the fact I, I brought here some frequent uh, questions that people sometimes ask me a lot, uh, so we can you know bring these questions during the the stream. All right, uh, while uh, we do here the vector doodling class. Uh, but you know, guys, just to let you know that um, all this you know content that we produce is gonna be available to download over the Vectorize Club, okay? On the club, you have access to all my contents, all the tutorials. It's on there that you can learn a lot. Uh, but here, uh, Kina, we're gonna you know, uh, do here the Vector Doodly and we can you know, brought here these topics. Let's start here with the what you can expect about Affinity, the future of Affinity. 
what, what do you think, you know, about the future? Of course, it's kind of hard to, you know, to, to think. <laughs> uh, yeah, what's yeah. your thoughts about it? Um, I think they have a chance of getting much bigger. Um, they are slowly attracting more and more um, Adobe users uh, that, you know, want to save money or haven't been particularly happy with um, their options. Uh, one thing I think they probably will focus on is iPad, um, because right now, even though Adobe is trying to do more um, iOS development for their apps, they're still pretty far behind, in my opinion. Um, I know there's a lot of frustration from, from people that their uh, iPad apps just really don't do much. Um, yeah. But, you know, Affinity on iPad is actually pretty darn good. So better in some ways than the desktop version in some ways. Um, so there's give and takes there. But, uh, you know, I start when I started to use Affinity, I started over the iPad. I didn't got first on desktop. Uh, <laughs> so I started my first experience. My first videos, it was, remember, the zombie video. So mm -hmm. it was... It wasn't there, basically. It was my one of the first experience. So and then I started to use on desktop and I enjoyed it and like it. Uh, just to tell people what I'm doing, I'm setting up here my screen to start to vectorize uh, this into perspective, like in isometric. That case, we have here um, isometric screen like that. Oops. <laughs> what is what this is being applied here right now? Let me let me back. So that's. What's happening here? <laughs> yeah, uh, basically, you know, Kina, when I use uh, the, um, let's say, the isometric, I try to follow the guidelines, like this mm -hmm. one, you can see. Basically, it's what, for me, it really matters. Because you need to set up here, first of all, the guidelines. That's going to help you to see the, you know, uh, the way that I apply like that now it's working. It's what I want so uh, Okay, now basically I will start to to block out here the the scene I'll start here with the floor the ground basically and Basically I'll convert these curves Yeah, I uh, you know I regard the the future of I think if you ask me right now um, I hope that they will they will stay more active on the social medias because uh, it's it's a kind of it's not their strongest point to bring people new users to Affinity. I think most people that are here they they know you know Affinity. Perhaps uh, it is not something that you know I'm telling like hey it's only this no, but I feel like most people know because of the tutorials that I bring. You know, if you go to their channel, you don't see many many things like weekly tutorials, things like that. Or no, I, that I don't think they do the best job of marketing themselves. They're not terrible at it, but they're not great at it. Um, yeah. You know, I even only found out about Affinity from a friend who was a rabid fan and early adopter. Mm -hmm. um, so he kept telling me, like, look at this thing. It's so much better. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, yeah. I'll give it a shot. And then, you know, just fell in love. Um, yeah. And I've been using Adobe for years and... Um, you know, at the time, the, the money savings of not having a subscription was uh, too, yeah. too good not to, not to follow through. So, um, yeah, and, and even I think most of the people that are even paying attention to the stream or in chat right now probably discovered it through someone else, um, you know, either on YouTube or somebody they knew mentioned it, but it's not so much from Affinity themselves you know yeah yeah that's true yeah. that's true I, I think this is a bit I'd say it's a bit bad for the community because if they got many use more users they would grow and if they grow they will they would apply more you no know, more features like they, they, they would grow more with more people joining them and I think of course there are some from my perspective because I do tutorials since 2018 basically i started you know with cheapest tools and you know i don't have you know like someone that pay pay me to you know in that time to bring right. everything 
so it's it's simple to start to do a tutorial you know uh, even you know uh, we have tick here on the 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 youtube channel on the chat he started to to do tutorials it's very you know helpful to the community to have tutorials to help you know people to understand how to use the app because at the beginning it can be a bit scary like to have this transition like you know using the app Ah, just to explain what I'm doing, guys, I'm blocking out the scene, all right? I'm creating everything geometric, like cubes. Think like cubes, and this is what you need to do, and this is stage, right? You don't need to focus on, you know, crazy stuff. Make it simple. Uh, let's go to the next question, Kina, here. Uh, let me open. The next question is about the market and design and art. So, I, I quite understand that you are... You are very <coughs> um, familiar with the art, you know, industry, right? Because you always study Parts art. Of the industry. So I went to college for graphic design. Um, graphic design. And at that time, while uh, web design was definitely a, a, a feature, um, my education was more into print design. So, you know, your typical uh, business branding, letterheads, uh, flyers, books, that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Not as much uh, digital. Uh, I think everybody I mean, starts. Digital tools, but not as much like creating a digital presence. But again, that was mm -hmm. back in 2009. So <laughs> it's been a while. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then I ended up segueing into the, the <laughs> stained glass window design uh, as a surprise. Um, and it just turned out that vector art um, is very useful for that. Uh, I think most people that, you know, because I, as I like to tell people, you know, all my background basically here on this channel is made by vector right but this is not something that i bring as rule like because mm -hmm. most people perhaps go to my channel uh to learn about vector to do logo designs and when they go into here onto here uh perhaps they don't find many kind of contents like hey how to do how to become a graphic designer you know and earn one million dollars in one month like that <laughs> You know, this is this is not uh, something that um, I usually bring. You know, like graph design. You know, very well, that, core brain these stuffs. Like my one is my illustrations. Why I found your channel so interesting in the beginning is, um, yes, I knew that vector art could be used for say game design assets. Um, I have a lot of friends that are in uh -huh. um, game design and illustration. Um, but most of them don't really use vector. They're all raster for the most part. The only vector art that people did in, in that side of things um, was actually 3D. <laughs> uh, 3D modeling is basically vector. Um, just, you know, true. Vector art, we 100 know, is true. <laughs> you, you control but, the nodes, right? So yeah, it's, it's all math based. Your polygons and your, you know, curves and um, yeah. So it's, it's related, but mm -hmm. Um, unless you're in like UI design, which I have a, my best friend is a UI UX designer. Oh, UI design. Um, this this era, as we are talking about, you know, uh, market. It's one of the own growing, you know, professional, own growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of little niches within the uh, design industry of the world. Um, I mean, that's actually why I decided to go to school for graphic design because I, I, you know, wanted to be creative and artistic, but I also wanted to have a functional job prospects, right? Mm -hmm. And growing up, you know, being an illustrator, being um, even an animator, I did animation in school. Animation, uh, right? Uh, as well? Yeah, but like old school animation, like self painting. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> see. Um, you know, uh, my perspectives of what I could do with art were kind of limited. Now it's it's a lot more, um, I guess, accepted. Like there's a whole industry now, and, and it existed for a long time, but it's a lot more public. Like there's more people aware of the different kinds of art that you can do for a living. Mm-hmm. That's true. You know, and it's a matter of figuring out what does or does not work for you. Um, it's kind of hard you know to identify where you fit uh, that's why most of my tutorials I don't like to you know uh, you know most because I have many tutorials but I don't have one single style that, that like I teach I teach many different things because I feel like I still don't have <laughs> you know a kind of 
well, I'm, I'm trying to find and one of the style that I'm you know finding I will show you guys do you guys want to see I'll show it to them I made this design for study uh, I made for another channel that I have but I made this character here you know it was a study you see wait hold on and let me enable it's here I made this one uh, this one is something that I'm you know 100% happy to achieve more in my art style something with clean sh you know simple shading uh, mm -hmm. where I can explore the vector really well with painting so this is something that you know it's living my heart at the moment I want to focus more in this style so basically just review here what I've been studying more behind <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my problem is I don't really have focus. I have so many different things that I like to do. <laughs> so I'm always me trying too, different too. things. Um. It's nice you know, to experiment because like, I feel like in all my life, I try to find one place in the world and I struggle because, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to find where you fit. You know, it's really hard. Uh, but yeah. by the time you start to feel like, hey, you need to simplify your life because if you try to do everything that the market says like hey you need to know how to tr make 3d you need to know how to make animation oh my gosh you're gonna you know <laughs> suffer a lot because the market yeah. wants to 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 see you doing everything but you cannot do everything you, you have family you have kids you have to eat you know, <laughs> food and they think that you have all the time to, you know, to update your skills and it's hard, you know, I feel like you're really overwhelmed by how the technology, you know, and the market demands uh, it's, you know, with people. And let me show here this technique, what I'm doing here, Kina, hold on. Guys, basically, I'm just, you know, duplicating this shape and I'm using now the, the contour tool to do this, to expand this shape, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice so basically you know Kina, it's kind of hard if you try to fit in all the niches in the world like uh, there are some winners niches that wins you know over the mm -hmm. the you know uh, the market like the best you know page ones and others is not it's really depends it really depends Someone on the club asked about, you know, how to make career, you know, remember? Mm, oh, yeah, and, yeah. But, you know, uh, I, it's it's a kind of very rare, I'd say. It's not something that I bring a lot, uh, these kind of questions. Because it's not many people that ask, right, here on the channel. Uh, I think, like, most people are here because it's more for hobby. I don't know. I don't know if most people make a living by doing these things that I like to do, <laughs> you know. Uh, but you know, it's a really great era because it's very relaxing, you know, and you don't see the time, you know, uh, you know, let's say I don't have the anxiety to, to, uh, to have the Fridays or the weekends because I enjoy my work, right? I enjoy my work. So I don't have to, to have this, I don't need to have the anxiety to, you know, to, to skip the weekdays. This is, I think that which is really being really bad for people that do what they don't like you know if you do what what something that you don't like you're gonna suffer my friend you're gonna suffer let's see oh uh if if tonic can uh, can you see what he said here on the chat uh sorry i missed that uh on the chat if if tonic uh said something that you can bring here as you know as as opinion. Um, sorry, I thought you were asking me to check something from the YouTube chat, so I was like reading like I don't ah, think uh, hold on, it. your camera has freezed yeah. uh, somehow. Um, yeah, I do. It's not ideal for most people, I think, to have a job where they're just trying to suffer through the week. But um, I don't want to glamorize art as a job either, because for a lot of people, being creative is a very personal experience and. And by creating something for other people to see, you're kind of exposing yourself in a certain way. And it can be really hard, um, especially if you're receiving criticism for what you're making, right? So it's, you have to yeah. develop a, a thick skin. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, my yeah, yeah, skin sure. is not as thick as it used to be. So I'm a little more sensitive to feedback and criticism. Uh, so, you know, it's not the easiest. Um, 
to, to put your work out there and and have it judged and you know uh, have to be paid for it. Uh, the competition for certain industry jobs has gotten pretty high. Um, yes. Because it, you know they basically have been marketed, especially in like the game design industry, right? So you have all these younger folks who love video games, they're passionate about it, and they want to be a part of, oh, I can do this for a living. Like, yes, you can, but they are going to uh, exploit the crap out of your enthusiasm for doing the job. And a lot of them end up burning out because the hours are just so ridiculous. And, you know, constantly having to, to prove yourself, uh, you know, or they'll find somebody else to do your job for you. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, or, or the animation, right? You know, if you're an animator, just because you work for an animation company does not mean you have work all the time. You're yeah. still having to do. Uh, Akina, okay. can you reset your camera? Because somehow it has freeze it here. I know. But yeah, if you can just oh, reset. Okay. I did freeze. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, guys, just to explain here what's happening uh, for now uh, in my side here, I'm just, uh, that case, um, Block out here everything as you see. It's not a complex, uh, let's say, process. It's very, very simple. I try to focus over the... Um, like cube. Think like cube. Can you see here this, this rounded shape? Don't make this rounded. Don't make this rounded. Go and make us a cube. Like that. Oh, here, one shape here. Another one. Oh, like that. I'm teaching you right now the fastest ways to make this. The fastest way. Here, a cube, okay, nice. And then you start to to extrude these elements, like I, I will group this and resize. And duplicate, resize. Bring this into here, oh nice. Duplicate and, oh my gosh, I have this result. Uh, Kina, uh, are you there? Just to know, because I will enable here again. Let's see. Just to know, uh, here. Ah, for now, I will just uh, increase this. I will make this more bold. Yeah, this one more bold. Ah, that's all. Uh, it seems that. Um, hold on, hold on. Because. Hold on, guys, because my I think that my stream has just crashed a bit. Okay, okay. I uh, cannot say that the internet, her internet has no. Uh, Crash it, but that's all fine. That's fine. And that case, guys, here I will just uh, resize here these shapes. This one, this one. Uh, I'm not very focused over the the values at this moment. Okay, so no worries about values. Just shapes. Here, this one. I I could. Duplicate this, okay, this one, duplicate and paste here. Uh, paste, but I need to make a tweak, like, let me see here. Oh, yeah, this will save me a good time. Like that, resizing, resizing. Yeah, working good. Uh, meanwhile, let me see here the questions. Uh, challenge to learn the app. Well, uh, I think the challenge that you're gonna have to learn the app, it is to to have confidence, right? I think that, of course, anything in your life that you need to learn, you need to practice, you need to, you need to have efforts. You cannot just learn without practicing. It's kind of impossible for humans. Unless if you are on AI, <laughs> you can learn, you know, by, by codes. But that case is not our case. It's not our case. I will bring this more up like that. This is a kind of blacksmith, you know, uh, place. And here, what I will do is to make this now rounded. Look at this. I will make this rounded. This here rounded. I, I'm doing this by using the corner tool. Okay, corner tool. That case. And here, just to show you. I'm going to bring this to here, oh. more or less behind, of course, behind of the shape, like that. Good. Uh, what's the most tricky uh, ways here? That case, it is to make this following, okay, the the corner, 
that's case. Let me convert this to curves because I, I want to to make this rounded over here like that. Something like this. Yeah, now I, I got what I want. Here you go. I will place this. This here. Yeah. Oh, good. And this one will be placed right here. Ah, I'll make this a little bit more rounded. In that case. Yeah. It's it's nice. Uh, let me see the shot. Uh, a little bit just to see if you have questions. <laughs> ah. Okay, uh, can we get back to my comments? I would like to hear your thoughts. Okay, let me let me give it a little check. Um ah, Kina is back here. Hey Kina. Okay. Is uh Sorry is a that. camera? That's not ours. So back to my regular webcam because the other one didn't want to connect again. You mean uh, the increased the the prices? That case, um, who the affinity? That case. I mean, uh, they increased the prices a little bit, but not drastically. For the update, he means. I just want to to understand. Uh, let me see more questions. Hey, Uncle Mez is here. Hello, my friends. Hope that you are doing very well. I will just make this a bit bigger and perhaps more bold. One thing that I'm enjoying to do is to make things more bold, you know. Uh, means It means that in an aspect that makes like this. <laughs> yeah. This is what I, I want to apply here. And I will duplicate the size. Uh, but that case, I think that the price over this new update is not, you know, if you work with that, you can pay in just, of course, it depends about how, how much you earn with your job, but you can pay in one day or a few hours. And, you know, it's a kind of, it's, it's a kind of investment that you apply and that you earn. All right. It makes sense. I hope. I will make something like that. It's kind of very bold. I want to have this. This is my intention to make it bold. Uh, let's do here these elements for now. This one. Uh, I just want. I'm wondering here. Kina, your camera has frozen or not? Or you are just stopped like a statue? <laughs> uh, it, it should be working now. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that you. Oh, it's freeze again because you are so. You know. Uh, uh, like freeze and I don't want. Well, I'm just like watching you draw. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'm zoning out. Sorry. Yeah, Guys, you know, I'm kind of. I like to play. <laughs> uh, here for this object, uh, it's a kind of it's a kind of trick. So one thing that I'm doing a lot that I show to people, it is to create a rectangle and I tweak by holding, you know, the shapes by rotating. This is something that I do a lot now. Let me delete this. Ah, no, I'll, I'll uh, rotate in this. In the chat, Nordic Hunter, excuse me, yeah, Nordic Hunter asked if this app can do true isometric illustrations. Um, the answer is yes. Yeah, this is true and uh, is a magic, of course. Can you see yeah, the grid so system? There's multiple um, guidelines and rulers that you can set up for how you want to uh, orient the perspective of what you're drawing. Yeah. Um, obviously, it won't do the job for you, but it will help you. Yeah, yeah. In that case, you know, um, there are other steps that make um, isometric. I remember, I will be honest with you. I remember when I was trying to make illustration isometric, in that case, using something like 2016. Uh, I got a, you know, a job, a task to do that. And I tried to do only Adobe Illustrator. And I spent one hour to find that tutorial to, that teaches you how to build a guideline just to build a isometric. 
So it's a, it was a kind of double pain. You need to learn how to make one thing to make another thing and another thing. Like it was, oh my gosh, I just want to make as a metric, my friend. No, it was kind of pain. <laughs> Kina, they said to you, uh, you know, to move because we know that if you, you know, you're not freeze anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's because, guys, I'll tell you, uh, Kina is from Minnesota, right, Kina? It's yeah, very it's cold Kina. in there, so uh, it's kind of, you know, she's, you know, it's, it's cold in there, it's freeze, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And oh, here, no, I will uh, keep up. Ah, I smash your ellipses. Ah, ellipses. Uh, you mean this? Yeah, because here I'm activating the edit in plane. Let's say uh, you are creating a normal ellipse, right? If you activate here the edit in plane, you can draw ellipses in, uh, in the crash plane, like this here. Oh, can you see? You can also convert, let's say, uh, you have a star, okay, oh, here like that. You have a star in 2D, if you go here to fit to plane, it's gonna fit this into the, the plane that you 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 click to fit. So, uh, it's, it's kind of nice, you know. Not a big deal. I'm creating, what's the name of this thing? It's Forge? Forger? Uh, what's the name, Kina? Uh, the anvil? This this thing here that the backsmith use. The I don't technique know the name. or the, uh, the no no uh, the item. item the item. Yeah, you you're the forge is uh the part where the fire is, and mm. the anvil is the big heavy block of metal that you do the pounding on to shape your your. Ah, metal. I see. I remember that there were some TV shows that. Uh, the blacksmith, <laughs> oh, <laughs> just you know, around the talk. <laughs> Forged in fire is is the at least the main one that I know of that's about smithing. Oh, this is very 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 cool, you know. Yeah. Ah, it's it's getting nice. Let me group these guys for now. I like to group everything that I do because my layers system gets too busy. And let me let me group everything here because it's important to keep. Group it. Uh, I like to select with shift and move. And okay, it's it's moving is because they are together. So, okay, in just few. Oh, all, all good. Let oh. me, <laughs> what they are thinking? Ah, oh, we have here more Minnesota guys. Uh, it's the Minnesota is is uh, nearby to to Canada or something because it's really yeah. Cold. We border Canada up north. Ah, yeah, I remember about this place when I watch the, what's the name of the, the Disney, um, what's the name, not the soul, it was Inside Out, yeah, Inside Out, the only, or the only way that I met, you know, Minnesota was from the, the Inside Out, oh my god, this, that one oh, was my favorite, out. yeah, Inside okay. Out, it was my favorite, uh, on you know, Disney movies because it, it just explain how the mind works basically. I really love that. Oh, what's happening here with my <laughs> thing? I so, um, what was it back in the nineties? They they started making a TV series recently about it, but um, there was a series of movies called The Mighty Ducks, which is about young hockey players in Minnesota. Ah, um, ah, yeah. Had a um, gosh, why can't I think of his name? Is Emilio Estevez? Is that who it is? Um, yeah. So, uh, there are a lot of ducks here. Um, and there's a lot of hockey. So, it makes sense. Mm, yeah, that's why I saw a lot of logo designs, you know, of, you know, this. <laughs> oh, hello from Germany. I also lived in Germany for a few years. Ah, uh, yeah. Wie geht es dir heute? Wie geht es dir heute? Es geht mir sehr gut. The only word that I know. <laughs> I wasn't I was struggling to understand German in that case. Uh, you know, I, I remember this one because I practice a lot. Because, oh, oh my gosh, just to say happy birthday is a kind of Herzlich Glückwunsch Sunket Boat Stagen. 
<laughs> oh my god, it's a big word just for one word. Because here in Brazil we, we yeah, say parabéns. Parabéns. And it's happy birthday um, and it's so short. But no, in German it's a just a big one. Like, you know, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, big was... words and you're supposed to pronounce most of the, the sounds. It's not like French where you can have a big word but it sounds like it's two syllables. Because they just go um. Yeah, yeah. You know. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Uh, I was remember. Uh, uh, I forgot uh, this pronunciation. It's kind of my mind is getting a bit, you know, uh, delayed. <laughs> 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 Guys, I'm doing the here the hammer, so it's a just cube, not you know a very hard one. I have it here. <laughs> this show. I have here a hammer here. Look, you know, this hammer is my friend because you know. I show to people, hey, I will break everything here if things are not the way that it should be. So basically, it's how the hammer works here on my side. I will do here the hammer, that case. Um, the Thor hammer, that case. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're I like that a one. Giant sledgehammer with a shorter handle. I know, I love this hammer a lot. Here I will just, yeah, you meet on your... Ah, wunderbar! I was trying to learn. Oh my gosh, what, what's the the word uh, that you know from Germany that they say a lot? Ah, wunderbar, wunderbar. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's very nice. You know, uh, I really want to learn more languages because it's something that refresh our mind somehow. It's really cool. Ah, here the hammer. It's nice. Uh, let's do here. Ah, the barrel. Uh, can I would show people to how to make the 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 barrel guys the barrel here that case uh it's in full ellipse right so i'll show you how uh, let's make this separated just to make this a clean tutorial for you because you know although we talk a lot, a lot about rounder stuff so I, I always still want to you know bring some big values to you here uh look at this i will start by creating the plane for the circle here i like that so i have here the top okay the top and then I will do this. Let me make this below because I don't want to distract my eyes like that here. And I'll duplicate, bring this below, and then you're gonna create a square. In that case, without perspective, like this. And then you need to bring this in the layer below. Okay, let me save this because in case that crash. Bring this to the layers below of this one. Now it's good. This is what I want. And then uh, after that, I will merge with this shape below. Make it measured here on top. Now they are together. Press A and push this to here. Oh, uh, how to pronounce do now that flood love? And do now dump shish. How to pronounce this, dude? I don't know how to pronounce this. <laughs> I apologize. I tried, but... Ah, here I'm just managing the shape. And there we go. It's it's ready. But we still need to define more... More the shapes here inside. Oh, like that. Here. Here below. Resize. In that case, this will be placed... You know... Uh, Nordic Hunter just pulled up an interesting topic that we probably want to go through. Um, okay. So they asked uh, if we know that the product that you're making in Affinity Designer is going to go to someone using Adobe Illustrator, what features should we stay away from? Like, are there certain filters or effects that don't translate between them? Um, if, let me see here better. I am that. sure that there are. I know that they don't 100% align, um, but I do not know of any off the top of my head ah. that would fall out. But that is something to to experiment with, and maybe maybe we should do some prep on that because I do still use Adobe, um, mm -hmm. and I haven't been using Affinity as much because of the bugs <laughs> that I've been getting from <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, that so I, I've been using Adobe more than Affinity right now. Um, so we probably should, yeah, do some experiments. 
Uh, I will tell you because I know some features that you can avoid. Uh, that's case you need to avoid to use um, the layer effects for sure. It's gonna mm. make this in raster. Uh, layer effects, blend modes for sure. Blend modes if you use that, it's gonna make it in raster. Even more if you use raster paint inside, it's gonna make in in raster as well. So to use a successful you know transition between Adobe Illustrator and Affinity, you need to use a 100% clean vector. You cannot yeah. use even the transparency tool, okay? And if you ask me ah, why they are you know like that, well, it's because it's it's some rule that vector files doesn't read this kind of functionality, yeah. right? I the think SVG does read even vector effects, though, like the contour tool and. Um Oh gosh, I just had another idea where to go. Um, so I haven't experimented with this, but I would be not surprised if using the contour tool on an object in Affinity and then trying to port it to Illustrator yeah. wouldn't work very well. Because um, it's just like a different That's methodology. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, same, same. I think the same. So, of course, some people, I think they get mad like, hey, I tried to export this, you know, and it's not opening like real vector, like vector brush. Vector brush is something like, it's not exactly vector brush because if you export this, it's, it's the name of vector brush, but it's not a 100% true vector brush. No, like, uh, what they do is they, they form, uh, well, depending on which kind of vector brush. They tile the, the, the pixel, they tile the pixel. Yeah. They but, but a lot of it is conforming a bitmap to a path rather than, you know, yeah. a fully vectorized um, brush shape. Uh, yeah, so that's it's iffy. Like, you got to know your brushes, um, how they're going to behave. Because even I find uh, if, if I work too small on something and I used a vector brush and then scaled it and realized, oh, shoot, it wasn't um, a proper vector brush. It's not scaling the way I wanted it to. It can be a real pain. Uh, let, let me explain here on the paint that is we are having here. Uh, the cycle, you know, rotating bo bounds. This one is not available here anymore. They, they, I simply remove it some from somehow here. But then you need to type a comma. I think it's comma or dot in your keyboard to do that. Like you know, I don't know why they decided to do this. Uh, sometimes, you know, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh. They should hire me to to do this UI because I would, you know, remake many things here, dude. Because hey, let's let's make this better. Let's make this better. Oh, uh, let me just. Oh, now the barrel is, is ready. Look at this. Look at this, my friend. Mmm. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't expect to see uh, very soon a kind of you know true vector brush. I don't know. Uh, you know, guys, I'm ve I'm very honest it, here. Huh? If you really want to try, but um, that's one of the disappointing things for Affinity across the board, is I don't think their brush engine is particularly good. Um, I just have not had very good experiences with it. So um, I try and mostly use the pen tool or the pencil tool when I'm creating an, an uh, designer. Uh huh. Um, you mean in vector like or raster? Uh, in vector, I don't even like ah, drawing in a. I have Affinity Photo, and uh -huh. I like it for editing, but I don't like it. Like I would not use Affinity Photo to draw in, like at all. I can't stand their brushes. Uh huh. And uh -huh. the 2.0 versions have been even worse. Like they're just buggy as heck for me. So like I don't even try. Um, I see. There are just better drawing applications. But yeah. for editing, I think it's it's still really good. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I quite understand what, what you mean about this because, you know, as I tell people that follow that like my work, uh, guys, I say, you know, we are honest, we are not here just to, you know, say, ah, that thing's the best. We, we say what is good and what's not good for us, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, I like to be 100% honest uh, when I, in terms of saying, you know, uh, technical aspects that helps me. Uh, I, I agree with you that it, the best, you know, for me, the performance is great and the way that you edit is really smooth it's this is what i like but mm -hmm. really true that the um, the pencil tool it's I, i've been you know requesting a better studio for you know the, the pencil tool the way that it works because it's generate 
too many nodes and it's really slow down my process you know like and also the scoped mode here that case it doesn't uh, you know apply in the way that I wish that could apply you know sometimes mm -hmm. uh, this this kind of delay my work you know uh, but if I try to use another app like Adobe Illustrator I would struggle because I you know <laughs> I'm very you know kind of comfortable with the way that I work here somehow and yeah it, so. it is different like I used um, Adobe for, for years and then I've been primarily, well, up until recently, was primarily using Affinity Designer for like the last like three or four years. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to Adobe, you're like, wow, this is different. And, you know, the, the menus are different. Um, the way that little touches to how things, like the same tool doesn't behave quite the same way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know how to explain it, but there's just this, like subtle differences and you have to get used to them again. Um, yeah. Actually, my biggest... Um, feature that I love from Adobe that I really hope Affinity implements at some point is while they have the flood paint tool now, I want a blood, uh, a blob brush. I want a brush that applies a fill and not necessarily a line. I love using that tool. Um, so I really hope that this is getting towards them developing that at some point. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I have a kind of feel, you know, a now that we are you know bringing more these issues to them like on the forum i think they will start mm -hmm. to uh let's say to consider that they could b improve this size right i think they they are planning somehow to remake the way that the line art works because it could be much better you know uh, in terms of quality uh here uh Avi uh evitonic said Join in the master of making drawing vector brushes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, he remember about the uh, which one? Ah, the candy. Ah, yeah, that one. Yeah, you know, uh, I've been using more the the raster in Blendy, like I show you guys in this one. I made this. You know what I really love? One of the reasons that I love Affinity, and I can say in you know to everybody. It is the way that you can do vector and paint, basically. You know, this is one yeah. one thing that I truly love. You know, and even with the you know kind of issues that we still have, and of course it's kind of you know time. You know, um, it's gonna take time, but I still you know feel that it's it's really good. It's really good. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, exactly. And you know, uh, it's not. Uh, Mipplesh said here is not it's not the software you know, that creates. It's you, right? It's you that creates. Um, but in terms of let's say of how the technology is in your disposal, let's say you are using a paint tablet that is bad, that it doesn't mm -hmm. deliver you a good a good uh, you know uh, functionalities. Right. It, it's yeah. going to delay your work, right? It's going to delay, and it really depends about and um, how how the tool will speed up your work you know how fast you can go with this tool uh, this for me it's what really matters uh everybody get really frustrated when you use a tool that crash a tool that you know it doesn't work w really well uh, let me change here yeah so i, I think a lot of emphasis on speed i am a slow artist i'm going to 100 put that on the table i am not fast uh -huh. uh, so for me it's not just about the speed of a tool but how much I like using it, so the yeah, comfortable, right? Experience matters to me because uh -huh. um, I don't want to do something that oh, it's technically fast, but like I hate doing it. Yes, um, that's true. Actually, it's a combination. Why right? I don't like to use Photoshop very much, because much as I know people love that program, oh my gosh, I don't really enjoy using me too, it. So me too, I would rather too. use a different tool with less features <laughs> that I like using. No, it's true. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, if you if you don't enjoy what you do, you're gonna have you know consequences. You will not be happy. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Yeah, the tools are kind of you know something that is like the hammer. You know, if you want to to build your house, if you don't have a good hammer, how you're gonna build your house with a bad hammer? So it, it's a kind of it really depends. Guys, uh, look at this. Um, 
the, this is the block art stage as we are talking building this is a kind of you know uh, kind of big work so yeah I, I don't don't remember but next week we are not gonna have uh, as far as I remember because I say to people hey guys the last day of the month you know the the last week of the month we're gonna, not gonna have live because we're gonna focus over the feedbacks on the vectorized club right because I was thinking if I will continue this project uh, in the next you know uh, one let me change here this one like that here because I don't want you know uh, to take much more time here. So, um, Michelle LeMay is asking, huh? uh, can you draw something in 2D and convert it into isometric, or do you have to morph the shape with the perspective tool? Um, as far as I know, there's not like a conform to isometric ruler button. I think you have to manually adjust your shape. Ah, brilliant. Like this one. Let me show it to him. Uh, mm -hmm. This one, let's say you want to make this design here in, pres in, pre in isometric. That case, uh, let me apply here in isometric. Of course, this will not apply and make this character really in isometric like 3D. No, not at all. What's gonna happen is that if I I can do this, you know, I can <laughs> make this in perspective, right? Uh, yeah, this is what you can do, right? You you can fit 2D into into the perspective. I could bring this character here, uh, like, you know, here on the, um, you know, in this floor or on the wall. So this is something that it's it's quite possible to do. Let's say I want to bring this character right here. So I'm planning, I, I don't know, but I'm planning to do a course, you know, the mini course to teach how to make characters. I still do think more about it. And I'm perhaps I'm gonna release over the uh, Udemy, you know, as well. uh, here you can see now it's there, but it's not correct in terms of perspective. Okay, uh, makes sense, makes sense. I hope this helps. Uh, let me turn off here because ah, let me just tweak here the, the house because I think this is is just enough for today. This one here and this one here, a little bit, and make some tweaks in order to make this more organic as possible, like that. Okay, not a uh, big deal. To be honest, to, to make a design like that, but it's it's kind of you need to invest time, right? It's not something that it's great automatically. You need to place your hands and you know do your efforts. Yeah, I think that we are just let me. Oh, just uh, the time check. We're um, a few minutes after nine now, or nine my time, not your time. Oh, uh, which one? I'm just, you know, adding some tiles here on the, the top and we are good. Ah, okay, now I was about to show as well um, one thing here before we go. Mm -hmm. uh, like, of course, this is not the best perspective, this tile one, but there is one feature that is not new, but I'm, use, I'm starting to use more. But basically, it's the gradient map. The gradient map, it's really cool because you can repaint and have a preview of your design. In that case, let me hide here these sketches. So I have here this design here, okay? And basically, um, the gradient map allows you to to apply a recoloring very fast, like like this. Let me, let me group everything here just to make sure that we have the result that, that is expected. This one, group it. All good now, uh, guys. This is a simplified one, and I will go to the adjustments gradient map here. Of course, I need to change this, uh, but that case, look at this. I will make this in. Let me delete this node. So, and for anyone not familiar with gradient mapping, what you're doing is applying colors to the values that are already in the image, so you can define. Hey, this dark value, if it's your shadow, you can tell the shadow to be this color, like if you mm -hmm. want to be purple or red or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's a very quick way to apply um, color effects over um, grayscale imagery. It's very popular um, for people who like to paint in values first. I do that fairly often, um, more on the raster side. I don't really use it in vector, but I should experiment with this, I guess. Um, but yeah, a lot of times people will paint 
in uh, either grayscale or in a monotone, like limited color palette. And then they can add more depth um, and color variance by doing a gradient map to block out your, your base colors, your shadows and the highlights and whatnot, and then do another layer above that to continue refining. Um, so yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. Cool perfect, perfect explanation, Kina. <laughs> really cool. Uh, yeah, guys. Basically, you you apply here a color that is based upon the the value. So it it's gonna change the color according to the um, you know the the scale of values. In that case, I could make this let's say in white. Uh, you know, like this here. You know. And this one I can be bring more to white to make in gray like that, you know. You can have a really nice, uh, let's say, I'd say this is really cool if you want to present this to your client, to someone that wants to see your, you know, um, your level of uh, shaping, let's say the blockout stage. And you can see more the values in a nice way as well. So, yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. So, guys, uh, we have built here this really simple vector doodling kina. Yeah, I think that's all good. Uh, you know, it, it, as I said, yeah, guys, uh, what we do here, it is more, you know, uh, we have a conversation, we, s we discuss here the features, uh, the aspects now about market, how you can, you know, let's say, build your career with, you know, uh, not only affinity here, in that case, you can become a graph designer or illustrator. And I just want to invite people here, Kina, a quick invitation for people to join to the club. What is the club, John? I will show you what is the club. Here, a quick uh, showcase. Vectorized uh, courses, I, I have here the club where you can join to, you know, to the classes. And also, I do have here for you the Affinity Masterclass that it is basically finished, but I still need to upload the the lessons regarding iPad, but the iPad I still is under, you know, let's say early access. We still need to wait for the development side. But here you have all the courses to learn Affinity 2.0, right here. Uh, it's no subscription. The Affinity Ultimate Design course is no subscription. So you don't need to worry regard, you know, uh, monthly payments, no worries. Uh, but regard the club, we have a small fee because it's helped me and us to bring tutorials every week and you know to support the community and you know the most important of all to help you to build awesome design okay so here is a quick overview about the the course and this one here i i show you in this lesson here the final pencil tool the cat uh, i show you how you can vectorize you know uh, a cat using you know photo so you're gonna practice here a lot uh, how you can use the pencil tool in order to vectorize you know uh, using photo so if you are a beginner this is the best lesson that you can get in order to learn how to use the pencil tool and have you know um, a decent result for beginner right so you can have a very fast result as a beginner okay well uh, Kina I want to thank you so much you know <laughs> for our time stay here during this uh, moment just share to people about our club uh, well well that's it Kina that's it all right it's nice to hang out with everybody and I hope you have a good weekend and we'll see you guys next week okay uh, next week in that case uh, just to let people know um, you know well, are we off next week yeah yeah the last oh, yeah, week sorry. of the month because I, I, will, I will upload the lessons and guys all the lessons for this month is gonna you know be offline on YouTube and available to the club okay and also the loads available to everybody thank you kina thank you thanks so much for joining bye, me today bye. and i see you, you know, another day and we can talk more later bye bye okay guys i uh, just want to you know uh, thank you so much again you know as I, I, I thank you every time but uh really really i really appreciate your time here with me during during this vector doodling i hope that you have enjoyed a lot join to the club you can have many access to my contents and also to the courses that i make available to you and also is available on udemy in udemy no subscription all right for people that don't want to you know uh, have monthly uh, commitment okay guys thank you thank you angela Mikael, uh, you know everybody from every place vela vitonic and uh, jeffer and everybody else or well, tick down nikki Juan, Carlos, Tibor, and yeah, I hope that you guys do that, and bye-bye, see you, and hi.